his nightgown. Can I steal it? <laughs> I better not. So what do you make of that behind me? There's Hendrix and there's Handel, ladies and gents. I've been given exclusive access to film in here. So get excited, you guys. You're going to come with me. Let's go to Jimi Hendrix's apartment in Handel's house. So I'm just waiting on someone to let me in. Uh, high security, they're not actually open at the moment, so they've given us access to film inside. So we're super lucky, and I get to take you all with me. Stay tuned. Okay, folks, we've got inside the museum, and we have John here with us right now, the events and engagements officer, who is going to give us a quick overview. So we've got a special treat. We've got the guy who knows exactly where we're going and what we're doing. And I'll Sorry. hand it over to John. <laughs> yes, so we're, we're, we're in the museum, Handel and Hendrix in London. Uh, Handel and Hendrix, obviously, there's two parts of the museum. George Friedrich Handel, being Handel, he lived here mm -hmm. from 1723 to 1757. So a large part of his life whilst in England, which is where he composed most of his major works and really made a name for himself. And he was the first resident here. So this was a brand new development. Mayfair was completely... Wow. But, you know, green belt land, as we would call it now, is completely, uh, completely new development. He moved in here in 1723 as the first resident of the house. And, yeah, he lived, lived here until his death. No family. He didn't marry. Oh, so didn't he? Bachelor. I thought he had family. Wow. He did in quite a large, uh, large house. Uh, so he ended up leaving quite a lot of stuff to his, um, his service oh, okay. when he died. And because of that... And there was a, a very extensive inventory done as well when he died, and that's why we were able to recreate the house. So whatever you see, most of it is not original and wasn't here when Handel was here. It's of the time period there, and it's recreated in a very okay. um, authentic way because of that inventory that we had. Fabulous. So that's the Handel side of things. Mm -hmm. And Hendrix, of course, a very, very, very famous musician along with Handel. He lives here um, in the 60s. He moved in in 1968. So there's a bit of time separating them. He moved in next door as well, so there's also a wall separating them. Amazing to think, yeah. Yeah, an amazing sort of uh, cosmic coincidence that two icons, Iconic music legends. Music, exactly. And they both came to London and made it and sort of changed the musical and so, cultural landscape, really. So Hendrix moved in in 1968 with his then girlfriend, Kathy Etchingham. So right. he met Kathy on his first the first day he was in uh, London in 1966. So it was the first uh, first day when he was here. He met her, and then he eventually moved into this flat. Well, not this. You will see this. But we'll like go there. Mayfair. That's upstairs, right? Upstairs. Um, and yeah, she found this flat for them in Mayfair. It's a good location because it wasn't particularly residential, and as you can imagine, Jimmy was playing music quite loud. Had quite a lot of um, friends coming over. Of course. A lot of after parties. <laughs> so it being a commercial area meant he could place it as loud as he wanted and up until whatever time he wanted. So it's very convenient in that Amazing. Sense. And also it's right next to, you know, Ronnie Scott, Soho, Bagginales, uh, Scotch St. James, all these places where he's going and playing afterwards. He could walk there or get a short, you know, short taxi ride. So it's really Just um, tune in to our rock and roll tour on the channel, folks, and we visit all those places. Ronnie yeah, Scott, yeah, Scotch yeah. St. James. So he was in the area location as well for Jimmy, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I think that's, okay. that's a nice little intro. That's a beautiful fun. intro. John, yeah. thank you so much. And thank you for letting us in. We're that's delighted. It. No worries. It amazes us how many places won't allow us to film inside, <laughs> but it's, this is great. So we're going to have a little look around. Yeah. Um, in the separate rooms, and then we're going to go upstairs to Jimi Hendrix's. Yes. Okay, so we'll just get a few shots in here, you guys. Let's have a look. Now, this is the first time for me as well. Oh, wow. So this is recreated from what they know from the inventory that was left when he died. Now, I believe he paid £50 annually for this to rent this property, I believe. Um, so, yeah, it wasn't, obviously, information on it was very expensive. You wouldn't get it for that now here in Mayfair, I assure you. Wow, and these are his um, portraits. Wow. Now, I do believe he composed the Messiah here as well. What's in here? Handel's Messiah. In the middle of Mayfair in central London. How incredible. 
So I just wanted to show you what to expect when you come into the museum here. I mean, what an elaborate pro property for one person. A bachelor, I, for under some reason, was under the impression he had a family, but evidently he didn't. That's quite unusual, but maybe he was committed to his art and his music. So let's head out here. What I'm really excited about is the Hendrix Museum. So this is obviously some sheet of music of his. And I believe what we're heading into is Jimi Hendrix's bedroom. Now, as much as I love Handel, I'm here for Hendrix. Let's just take one look, let's look at that beautiful room there. Oh my God, you guys, how amazing. So let's head upstairs to Jimi Hendrix. This, we're actually going to be in the same room as Jimi Hendrix. I cannot believe this. My psychic. Oh, this is more of Handel's. Oh, my apologies. So we're going upstairs in Handel's. Oh, the bedroom, you guys. Oh, look at that. I don't want a bed like that myself. Oh, my days. This is stunning. We've done a very good job here, folks. This will have to be on your list of places to visit when you arrive, amazing to think I'm in the bedroom of one of the most incredible composers in history. Oh, wow. I'm back again. Look at this. Let's just give you a view of where we are. We're on the second and third floor of Brook Street. I know you guys love a good tour inside of a museum because you've been amazing with the clink as well. And, oh wow, formal gowns. There's a gift store. I hope to God I can get into the gift store and buy something. Cannot leave here without buying something from Hendrix. Head through here. I think I've stumbled on the staff kitchen. <laughs> That's okay. Right, let's head in here. His parlor or his living room. I mean, how incredible is that? He's even got Amazon deliveries, ladies and gents. Okay, so there's somebody else coming up to film right after me. So I'm going to take you out of Handel's drawing room or living room. And we're gonna make our way up to what we came for. But amazing to think that these walls separate the 200 years of music. Incredible to think. Two icons. Oh my God, that red. You guys love it in there. Let's go up and see Jimmy. Okay, upstairs to the Hendrix flat, third floor. Now I get the impression this is not ideal if, I don't think they would have an elevator, but I will check. So this is the original, it says 18th century paneling from Handel's house in 2001. Restorers re-scraped -scra away 28 layers of paint to reveal the lead gray color that had been used when the house was built in 1723. Wow. And here we go. Sorry, they're very creaky. Oh, I'm gonna start growing. Oh, you guys, look at this. I mean, Zoot Money's Wanderer Blue Jean model guitar. 
This guitar is the first Jimi Hendrix ever played on British soil. Oh my God, I'm so tempted to break the glass. There's so much to see, I don't wanna. So this is the 24th of February, 1969, when Hendrix played the Royal Albert Hall. He enjoyed the luxury of a chauffeur-driven Rolls Royce from Brook Street. And there he is, a legend. Look at these pictures, you guys. And there is the man himself. And let's just walk around here now. It's a little dark, but hopefully we'll be able to capture it all. Etching and found the Brook Street flat advertised in one of the London evening papers. The rent was 30 pounds a week. And earlier on, as I mentioned, Handel, 200 years earlier, paid 50 pounds annually. So here's a regular day in the life of Hendrix. So Hendrix would usually not wake up late until late in the afternoon, especially after a night of jamming and partying with friends, it says. It's a little dark here. So working from home. Despite Etchingham's best efforts to create a quiet domestic life in Brook Street, the flat was frequent, frequently used as a venue for meetings with musicians, journalists and photographers. You can literally smell the partying. Many of the musicians who were busy on the London scene passed through Brook Street flat at one time or another. They often ended up crashing in the spare room upstairs. Now Hendrix gear, the Octavia pedal, was famously developed by Roger Mayer, working closely with Hendrix. And here we have the effects which gave Hendrix music such a unique and enduring sound came about as he embraced and even helped develop new technology. Right, this is a must for music fans. There is no way you can visit London without coming here. in here this room is amazing thank you John so there's more about him in his early years he marked by his family's struggle with poverty and alcohol music was all consuming for Hendrix from his early teens eventually crowding out his formal education right let's head in here this is the original 18th century staircase that Jimi Hendrix used to get up to his flat and the guitar is a Fender Stratocaster, limited edition 2015, generously donated by Rob Dickens CBE. The guitar features signature touches and unique appointments based on Hendrix's dis distinctive flipped over guitar. My apologies, the, my eyesight is getting worse as I'm getting older. This lady's taking pictures as well. Oh my God. This is absolutely insane. Being in the room that he spent so much time in. Now let's get a good overview of it. Am I on your way there? No, no, no. We've worry. even got cigarettes in the ashtray. And still some alcohol. old phone let's go over here and have a look see what's here and see the old Benson and Hedges oh, is that some of his lyrics even the bin
I'm just going to read out what I said about the bedroom here. It has been rec recreated using evidence from photo shoots and films captured here. From reporters' descriptions and through okay, discussions girl. with Kathy Etchingham. The artifacts have either been built from scratch as replicas and detail work from original photographs or sourced in a global search for analogues surviving from the 1960s. The oval mirror above the fireplace is the one item which was original to the flat. Our goal has been to recreate the feel of the space and in doing so shed light in Hendrix's life and surroundings in 1968 and early 1969. Okay, look at that for an image. Contact sheets of images captured by Barry Whitson in this room on the 4th of January. These images and many more were key source for our recreation of the room set. Oh my God, epic. So they use this to recreate the room, folks. I honestly cannot even tell you how incredible it is to be in this room. I mean, it's just mind blowing to think you're in the same space that Jimi Hendrix spent so much time. Wow. Oh, spiritual pretty special I'll be taking all of you guys back here I promise you and my friends will be all coming here with me they're gonna lose it when they see this and that's it so we've got another one in here <laughs> So this is like a um, storage room and a place for friends to crash overnight. So this is record collection. And these are all his performances. A list of all of his performances, the Baganel, the Scotchy James, the Polytechnic. Yeah. Hendrix's first public jam in the UK, and yes, as so many of you have pointed out to me, that gig with Cream was in the Polytechnic, you guys. And thank you for that. Because we were given the wrong information, so many of us guys. We believed it was a Scotch St. James, even though he did play there, but alas, we have come to that conclusion. Now, you guys, look at that for a collection. It's really beautiful, the LPs and the bar. Two sets of graphics representing each of the LPs in Hendrix's collection are organized here either alphabetically or by genre. Oh, so you can go through them, but yeah, I feel like you could go through them. And this is his jacket. <laughs> With monopole guitar strings. Wow. So this other girl is here, so she's arranging to meet her friend here. So I'm going to do one walk around. She's going back downstairs, so we'll do one more walk around. be hard not to feel overwhelmed in here folks it's just amazing now let's have one quick more good look around and here's the bedroom again oh my god this has been a highlight of one of the museums of all of the museums in London for me it's hard enough to break out into voodoo child we'll get one last skin of it here and all the little intricate details around the room. His nightgown, will I steal it? <laughs> I better not. Okay. So is there any more we can talk about here? Oh yeah, this is the original stairs, it says. Previously, the stairs went up to the top floor of the flat in the modern fitted and pink bathroom, kitchen and pink bathroom to enable level access to the main room of the flat half of the stairs has had to be removed. So visitors can have a greater understanding of how it was once laid out. The remaining treads have been left exposed, so these would have been the remaining original staircase. 
that he will just step on the top of. Oh, I don't care if my hands get dirty. Love, love, love. Right, you've got to put this on your bucket list for London, ladies and gents, when you come to see us. The Hendrix and Handel Museum. Hope you enjoyed this as much as I did. Obviously, you'll enjoy it a lot more in person. Thank you again for joining me, you guys. Sinead here with Free Tours by Foot, the highlight of my Mayfair tour for me today. I hope it was for you. Don't forget to like and subscribe and tune in to many, many other videos we have in different countries. Right now, I'm not going up there, staff only. I'm going to sign out. Thanks again. Sinead here in London.